works. They've taken me from buggy Florida to the beautiful shores of the Bahamas and have landed me in the freezing cold waters of South Africa. I've had to wait hours in the cold for two nurse sharks to let go of one another and had to drink way more than the recommended amount of Red Bull a person should ever have in one night to stay up to possibly see this, a breach. With over 500 species of sharks alone, never mind their relatives, I've been kept busy the past couple of years. And now sharks have brought me here. Two years ago, I moved to New Zealand from Florida to get my master's degree in marine biology at Victoria University here in Wellington. I study sharks and their relatives, the skates, the rays, and the chimeras. I specifically look at their habitat use and migratory behavior, answering where they are and why they're there, and how social media and the media in general covers them. Now, chances are, while I've been talking about these animals, you've been thinking of them as neutral, just sharks, neither male nor female. That was done on purpose. Because often when you turn on the TV, see a nature show and it has sharks, you'll hear the narrator say, wow, he's a big one, followed by some bleeped out curse words. And this is done even without seeing the key external giveaway on whether a shark is a male or a female, the claspers. Now to put it bluntly, claspers are the shark's version of a penis. Plural because sharks have two of them. Commercials do this too. One of my favorites is a Snickers one, and there's two sharks, three, debating on what human they would prefer to eat. And while never identified as male, the husky voices by male actors lent to the idea that these sharks were in fact male. Now there are other things that are wrong with this commercial. Like it does nothing to dispel the myth that sharks eat people. But the thing that teenage Melissa was mad about the sharks didn't have claspers. <laughs> They're not that hard to draw in. <laughs> My dad found it hilarious that that was what bugged me the most, not the fact that the sharks were talking at all. <laughs> this is often the case when talking about the scientists who study these animals, you see the males. It's like we female researchers are like deep sea sharks lurking in the darkness. There, but nobody's paying attention. That's how it was in the field for a while. Your peers, your mentors, your professors were all male. And it sucked not having anybody to turn to who has taken your path when things were overwhelming or confusing. I had male professionals rip the shark tags out of my hands because I wasn't strong enough to get them through the shark's thick and protective skin. When I asked them what I could do to get stronger, I was met with laughter and a snide, huh, leave it to the males. We work out so we can do this sort of thing. Now there are more females in the science fields, and that's great, but we rarely get the spotlight. In fact, female sharks, they have to asexually reproduce in order to get their 15 minutes of fame. That's right. Tinder for sharks has not been invented yet. So, some females have actually developed the ability to have babies on their own. Now, while some species can store sperm for long periods of time and reproduce that way, these babies, these pups, were special that they only had their mother's DNA. It's extraordinary, and maybe not unusual, that they switched from sexual to asexual reproduction, but cool nonetheless that they decided to take reproduction into their own fins. <laughs> the other extraordinary factor of this, the females that study these animals. I'll introduce you to one of them. This is my friend Megan McCord. She is a scientist, a shark scientist in South Africa. And I'm going to tell you a story about her and a bull shark. Megan and her team caught a four meter long, almost half a ton bull shark. Megan was six months pregnant when she did that. The bull shark was also pregnant. Yeah, spoiler alert, the big boys you see flying through the air are often big girls. 
Yes, I look for claspers on flying sharks. I don't know what that says about me, but it stays nonetheless that the females do tend to be larger than the males, which can lead to some interesting encounters, like male, female eating a smaller male. Oops. Now, while we female researchers don't eat our male counterparts who annoy us, though sometimes we wish, <laughs> We are pretty stubborn. We have to deal with things in the field that men just don't have to deal with. Periods, pregnancies, pumping breast milk, in field conditions that are less than ideal. I'll give you an example. I'm a menacing five foot one, 48 kg, that's 100 pounds for the Americans listening. And I was asked to pick up the anchor that's half my size, both in height and also weight. That's fine. Oh, by the way, you're doing it in a storm, alone, and everyone else is seasick. Oh, okay. It didn't end well. I apologize to my parents for all the medical scares I've had the past couple of years. <laughs> Just like female researchers have to deal with certain things in a male-dominated field, sharks, female sharks, have some issues to deal with like their own, like sex. Gone are the champagne and the rose petals. Instead, males actually have to bite onto females to keep them still during the act. Ouch, I know. Now, you would think that would hurt the females, and to an extent it does. Hard not to with those teeth. But females have actually adapted in that their skin is up to three times as thick in some areas, like where the males bite. We female researchers have also had to adapt to having thick skin. As a Latina marine biologist, I am not alone in dealing with racism, sexism, ageism, and more in a field that is still predominated by males. In fact, on Twitter, 92% of the most followed scientists, males, think Bill Nye sort of thing. And when females are added into the narrative, it's because of our appearance, not because of our achievements. To be honest, I actually worried about what you guys thought about my outfit today more than what you thought about my words. And I'm not alone in that, actually. I held a poll recently, and out of the 682 women that voted, 74% of them had their appearances critiqued over their work. Think about that for a second. 74%. To combat that, we've come up with hashtags like distractingly sexy and dress like a woman to reject the sexist idea that our appearance or our very existence is a distraction to our male colleagues. When I tell people I'm a marine biologist, a lot of them say, oh, that's what I wanted to be. I ask them why they didn't pursue that. You want to know why? Lack of role models. They didn't see themselves where I now am. And that's a problem. <laughs> because we've now got organizations worldwide who are realizing this, this lack of diverse role models, and are, we've got programs cropping up worldwide to try to combat that to encourage young girls to pursue the sciences and shedding a much-needed spotlight on diverse women in those fields. Role models. I wish I had when I was seven years old. Now, hopefully, kids that age can look up and see those people and maybe see themselves among them. I grew up with no Latina marine biologists, and today I know very few. And I realize I'm now in a position to be that role model I wish I had when I was seven years old. Even though I don't know where I'm going to end up. I'm young, I'm 23. But I know I'm going to continue being an advocate, not only for the representation of diverse sharks, but also for diverse scientists. And I'm doing that already through my organization, the Finns United Initiative. Because I'm hoping that someone out there can see themselves in me and say, she did it, I can do it. If she's doing it, I will do it. It's not that hard, and I'm hoping through stories like mine, we can smash the stereotypical portrait of what a scientist is. 
Because think about it, when you ask a child to draw a scientist, you get a guy in a lab coat, you don't get me. It's as easy as the start of a hashtag to someone who has a platform and is willing to pay attention. Like, say Bill Nye. Yeah, that hashtag? I helped start that. And he responded, and I'm glad he did, because the continued lack of diverse role models makes me wonder what unrealized potential we continue losing because people can't see themselves where I am, where we are. Just like visibility is important for kids, it's also important for the women already in these fields. Our voices are absent from the leadership table, and that's sending a really strong message. As a Latina marine biologist, I was uplifted and championed by other women, and I hope to pass that along. I hope that women can understand that they are just as competent as their men counterparts, and that no matter their size, their color, or whether they have claspers or not. A shark is still a shark. Don't let the women researchers in your life be like the deep sea sharks. Pay attention. Shine a light. We're here. Thank you. Muchas gracias.